Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is we started with this big pool of people who've got alcohol and drug problems. And what do we say? Out of that big pool, we got 10% of them, right? We got 10% of them that are going to get to us. Now, I want to talk about the front end of treatment. Of all the people who seek treatment from us, I want you to think about this. How many people call your agency for assistance who will never hear back from again? Then I want to know how many people will call and make an initial appointment but won't make it. Then I want to think about how many people will call and make the first appointment but we'll never see them back for the second appointment. So I'm really talking about issues of, of our ability to initially engage and, 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 and access. Do we have a low threshold of engagement or do we have a high threshold of engagement? Traditionally in the acute care model, we've had a very high threshold of engagement. There, there are lots of hoops you gotta go through to get into treatment. Agreed? There are a lot of obstacles to work out to get into treatment. Uh, in 1969, to get into a, most therapeutic communities, uh, they had a very unique triage method. You had to call multiple times if you're a person on the street to get in. And I would call and they'd say, you've got to call back tomorrow at exactly 10 o'clock. Right? <laughs> Being a good dope fiend, there ain't no way I'm calling at 10 o'clock. I may call 10 o'clock three weeks from now. So I keep calling, you know, keep calling. And they say, okay, you got to call back tomorrow. And finally I, get to, I figure out what's going on here. I'm pretty smart. So you call three days at exactly 10 o'clock. And they say, okay, now you get to come in. So you get to come in, and then you get to get to sit on a prospect chair, right? Some of you know about the prospect chair. In the prospect chair, ain't nobody talking to you. You just got to sit there and watch the community for hours, right, in some cases. Now, the day that I sat down in the prospect chair, the first thing I saw was an African-American about this tall with shaved head except for a tuft of hair with a red bow in it, and he's wearing a diaper. And he's got a sign that says, I'm a baby, help me grow up. And I thought, what in the hell kind of cult have I got myself into? And then you would see all these other exotic things going through, you know? I mean, women with their heads almost shaved and exotic signs and weird rituals and people. I mean, it was, it was a fascinating, it was like a zoo. It was like fascinating. And finally, you get called in from the prospect chair. And in this intake interview, right? You, you got, you got, you got, you, you you gotta, you gotta admit three things before this interview is over. I'm a baby, <laughs> right? I'm stupid, and I need help. And the I need help ain't easy. Because you gotta, in this case, you gotta stand up on a chair or a table, pull your pant legs up, remember? And you gotta yell, I need help. And they said, everybody's yelling, we can't hear you. <laughs> and we're, we got these piercing screams, I need help. And oh, by the way, what are you, you willing to give us your, give us your car? Your hair? So, I mean, I mean, now, if you could picture somebody on, standing on a table, pant legs pulled up to their knees, screaming, I, I would say that's a fairly high threshold of engagement, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, it doesn't take long for word to get out what you've got to go through to get into a TC like that, right? So what's that mean in, to, in terms of who's going to get there? What's the, what's the counterpart we got to that today? We have money counterparts. <laughs> right? How much money you got to have to get through doors? We got those high thresholds. How many pounds of paper do we have as far as thresholds for people to get through? How many, how many times do you think we have people so turned off by the sheer volume of mechanical questions thrust at them that they just turn around and leave. We get, it, we get an incredibly, high, one is we get very high dropout rates from waiting list. The second we got a waiting list, what happens in terms of, in, of attrition of people? And we lose at least half. And the longer the waiting list, the higher, the higher the dropout is. You know, in the United States, we still have many communities where if I'm, look, if, if I'm a heroin addict 
and I'm looking for a methadone treatment slot. There are communities today where how long may I have to wait for the very next slot opening up? Six months, nine months, a year or longer is still not unusual. So if we do study of waiting list, how many people do you think we find who die on waiting list in the United States? It's high. It's high. Older? Yeah. Yeah. I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> so, no, I mean, that's what you're going to hear. I, I, I ain't getting on no chair, uh, you know? I've been on them chairs before. I mean, that's the person who's going to cross the street and they're going to look for, they're going to look for a, a lower threshold treatment program. If I come today and I say as part of the intake process, I, I'm in trouble with cocaine. I'm in trouble with cocaine. I need help. I, I, I understand. I got that problem. My efforts to manage that problem have all failed. I need help being outside myself with this problem. But why are you talking to me about reefer? Because reefer ain't never been a problem in my life. In fact, it's sort of been a solution in, for a good part of my life. <laughs> if, I'm not if I'm not willing... To, to, to buy this whole package of yours, because you're telling me the only way you're going to admit me is what? It's if I'm willing to look at total abstinence from all these. In other words, you're asking me to get well before you'll admit me. In, in other words, you're, gonna, you're asking me to rewire my brain as a condition of entry in, to begin treatment. Now that's high threshold. Traditional, and very traditional, and current right up to the day in many places. In a lower threshold program, we start, we literally start with where people at. If somebody's ready to work with cocaine, we'll work with cocaine. The only thing we ask is a commitment to reevaluate the rest of their psychoactive drug use as part of that package. Do you understand? Well, I ain't asking for I ain't asking for abstinence up front. So what have we done with the threshold? Because what I'm saying now in classic kind of stages of change theory is what? I've got a client who is in action stage related to cocaine dependency, but is in pre-contemplation related to the relationship with other psychoactive drugs. So we're going to start in action stage and then try to work with motivational interviewing and other strategies to move the client along to reevaluate and rethink these others. But that's an, that's an outcome. It's not a precondition to get somebody into treatment. That's what I mean when I talk about lowering the threshold of engagement into treatment.